Hey Sharptown! Happy Wednesday! It's Dawn Jeffers here and I'm super excited that you joined us for our daily messages today. So this week we have started a new series and it's all about God's promises. Promises are beautiful things. When someone promises you something, there's a level of trust that comes with it. Um, when our spouse promises to love us on our wedding day, we trust that. When um, our friends promise to save us a seat at the lunchroom, we trust that. When our um, parents promise to be there when we finish up at the orthodontist, we, we trust that. Promises are beautiful until they're not. These promises are made by broken, sinful people who have the potential to let us down. When promises are held by people, they can easily be broken. But here's the good news. God's promises are different. We serve a God who is perfect. A God who never breaks a promise, no matter what. So when we talk about God's promises, we can have full confidence that these promises will remain no matter what. The Bible is full of God's promises. And so it's exciting to be able to take some time to think through these promises from the Lord. Yesterday, Ben kicked it off and talked about the promise that God wants to know us intimately. And that's a beautiful thing. Today, we're going to spend some time thinking about another promise. And it comes straight from the Bible in the book of Isaiah. So I'm going to turn to Isaiah chapter 47 and it's verse 2 and it says this, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. <clears throat> so it says, when you walk through the waters, I will be with you. What powerful imagery, powerful words that this promise is full of. God promises us to always be there with us, no matter what is happening. So when I was thinking through this lesson and uh, writing down some notes, I was sitting in my van at the orthodontist office. My youngest, Daniel, um, was scheduled to get braces yesterday. He was excited to go, but he was also really, really nervous. And he wanted me to go back with him and wanted me to go through the process with him. So when we arrived, there was a sign on the door and the sign said, waiting room closed, please call. So I called to tell him that Daniel was there and he was ready and I asked if I could go back with him to be with him because he was so anxious to do it alone. They very kindly told me no and um, that's when the tears hit. The tears started rolling and he became even more anxious because he did not want to go through this without me by his side. And so, in a hot sticky van with a mask on his face, we decided to pray. And when we prayed, we remembered the promise of God. When we walk through the waters, I will be with you. We filled our minds with God's promise and then we had a new confidence that filled us because of it. And he was able to walk into those doors and face this fear, face these high waters in his life because he knew that God was going to be with him. You see, these promises are true and they have the ability to change the way that we live our lives. This verse, this promise, it has become the Jameson family verse. Um, several years ago, actually 20 years ago, uh, our family was really going through a hard time financially. The money was really tight and my parents were trying to raise three children 
um, amongst all that. And so Jeremiah was a senior in high school, Jason was a sophomore in high school, and I was in eighth grade. And every summer since I was born, our family has gone to the Creation Festival. The Creation Festival is a huge music festival that lasts for four or five days down in Pennsylvania and there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people who go to this festival and so we went every year and we would sell jewelry there so we were a vendor we had Jameson's jewelry and um, every year was kind of a gamble would we do well selling jewelry would we not do well would it be a good year would it be a bad year Jeremiah was also graduating high school and my parents were um, wanting to buy him a graduation gift and they didn't know where they were going to have the money to buy him a graduation gift. And you guys know Jeremiah. Jeremiah loves music and so what he wanted was a black ovation guitar and he had the details of exactly what he wanted to look like. He drew a picture for my parents and said this is what I really want for my graduation gift. So my parents were really hoping to have made enough money at creation that year to be able to buy him this guitar. Unfortunately, um, things did not go well, did not go the way they wanted them to go at creation. They barely cut even. And um, it was really overwhelming. It was really worrisome that entire time. Now every year at creation there is also uh, a bunch of raffles that you can partake in. So there's different things that you could win. And one of the items for that year was a black ovation guitar. And it was signed by all of the artists who played or performed there. So every year we would do this. Every year each of us would fill out the raffle, we would throw it in there, and we wouldn't even think twice about winning because Creation had about 80,000 people there. And so we never thought that we would win anything. Now with that all being said, on the last night when my parents were feeling completely swept over by the waters of this life, my dad heard his name over the loudspeaker. And he didn't know what was going on, but he heard his name and it wasn't until a flood of people came celebrating, they told my dad that he had won the raffle. And he didn't just win a raffle, but he had won the black ovation guitar the one that matched the drawing that Jeremiah had drawn that he wanted for his graduation gift. So he went and got it and he presented it to Jeremiah as his gift. That's so cool, that's so cool. Um, but here's the thing. When we walk through the waters, when we go through these hard times, God is with us. Now, God did not take my parents out of the water. They still were in financial crisis. But God reminded them that he was still there with them. A couple hours later, um, one of our vendor friends uh, that sold pictures came up and over to my parents and they said, we really feel like God is leading us to give you this picture. And they handed this drawing over to my parents, and it was of Isaiah 43, 2. That God is always there with you, no matter what is going on in your life. God promises to be with us in the hardest of times in our lives. When we have to walk into the orthodontist office alone, or we have to sit in the van patiently to wait for our kiddo to come out, or when we're in financial crisis, God is there protecting us. There are a couple words in this verse that I want to pick out. And the first is this. The first word is when. When you pass through the waters. It doesn't say if. It says when. Which means that, my friends, we're going to have troubles we're going to face hard times. We're going to be in the water. We're going to be in the fire. John 16, 33 says, In this world you will have troubles, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Being a Christian does not exempt us from the troubles of this world, but it does provide us with hope and assurance that we never have to face 
these troubles alone. God is there with us, and God is protecting us all the way. The second word is through. Now, one of my favorite books is by Max Licato, and it's called You'll Get Through This. And I want to read for you a little bit out of his book. And it says this. It says, you'll get through this. You fear you won't. We all do. We fear that the depression will never lift, the yelling will never stop, the pain will never leave. Here in the pits, surrounded by steep walls and angry brothers, we wonder, will this gray sky ever brighten? This load ever lighten? We feel stuck, trapped, locked in, predestined for failure. Will we ever exit this pit? Yes, deliverance is to the Bible what jazz music is to Mardi Gras. Bold, brassy, and everywhere. Out of the lion's den for Daniel, the prison for Peter, the whale's belly for Jonah, Goliath's shadow for David, the storm for the disciples, disease for the lepers, doubt for Thomas, the grave for Lazarus, and the shackles for Paul. God gets us through this stuff, through the Red Sea onto dry land, through the wilderness, through the valley of the shadow of death, and through the deep sea. Through is one of God's favorite words. It won't be painless. It won't be quick. But God will use this mess for good. So you'll get through this. Whatever this is, whether it's financial woes, relationship valleys, health crisis, find hope and assurance. in when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not overtake you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. What a great promise we have there. So my prayer is that you will find hope and that you would find peace in this beautiful promise from our perfect God. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for your promises. We thank you for your word that is just able to uplift us and turn our minds to you. God, we thank you that no matter what we go through in this world, that you have overcome, that you are with us every step of the way. We thank you for being a perfect God in this imperfect world. We love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, Sharptown, have a wonderful day. See ya.